everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We are in part three talking to Linda Howell about her newest book, Inspired Manifesting. Elevate your energy and ignite your dreams through the Akashic Records. Now, in the last segment, we were talking about um, the, the incredible acceleration of change. And what I've noticed about the pandemic is that it has changed. It seems like in some ways everything has slowed down and in some ways a whole nother thing has emerged. Um, and what's interesting that I've noticed with my clients is so many people are like, I don't like my, I've been staying at home and I realized I don't like my home. I don't like my spouse. <laughs> I don't like my job. You know, it's just that time of stillness that they're learning what they like and don't like that they were just running around so quickly they never really thought of what they liked and didn't like and so um how do you think all of this relates to the akashic records oh, that's a great question okay so so my understanding you know the akashic record has been available, you know, since we stood up on two feet, okay? It's been there. It is only since the, the mid eighties that the Akashic record has become available to secular people like you and I, okay? okay? Now, I know I came into the record in 94 when there was a lot of, um, oh, I feel like the gears were like just starting to like, <laughs> right? The idea of the Akashic record is a vibrational archive of every soul and its journey. And it was interesting because there was, do you know this guy, what was his name? Cheney or Cheney? And he was in California and he was in charge. Uh, he was at the head of the Astara Foundation. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a book likening the Akashic record to the internet, the World Wide Web. Wow. So, you know, as, as above, so below, as within, so without. Mm. It's all the same. Okay. So these ideas start bubbling up. I came into the records. Um, in 94, I got the pathway prayer that is, I, I now, you know, it's in, you know, gosh, you know, lots of languages. Um, I teach people all over the world how to work in the records. It's, it's unbelievable. Right. And just for people who don't know, it's the prayer to actually give you access. It's like your secret code to get it's into like, right, It's like the password, right? right? Yeah. It's just like, it's like, okay. So, so this is how all of that goes now. What's very interesting is the Akashic, having, um, having access to the record and people learning how to use the record is, is ultimately about having a more conscious connection with our own soul. Understanding everybody has a connection with their soul. It's just that we're not always so conscious of it. Working in the record empowers that connection, that awareness, mm -hmm. okay? Now, Fast forward to, to now, right? We are living in a time un, unprecedented. And I know that's the most overused word of 2020, but it's true. Okay. And in this time, the global pandemic hits with a vengeance, right? There's nothing to stop it. It just every... Every, uh, every continent, every race, every uh, social strata, every, every area, right? And so what happens is all the institutions, organizations, everything that we have leaned on, right, structurally in the hope that hold us together has just fallen apart, mm -hmm. is dissolved mm -hmm. in the face of this. And mm -hmm. what is emerging is really what's always been so and that is as a as a as a planet we are one planet as a human race we are one now that's always been true 
But in order to survive this pandemic and find our way to the other side safely, we must operate in the truth of who we are. And the truth of who we are is that we are one. We have always been one. We are already one. It's not like we're knitting ourselves back together as one. That's already the case, mm -hmm. right? Is our oneness. Everything that's emerging. You know, the climate crisis, holy smokes, if that isn't scary, I don't know what is. I mean, we have, but see, the resolution of the climate crisis will require global cooperation. The resolution of, you know, I was just reading today about the global response to, to Biden's, um, you know, economic package, the stimulus, right? And how the, how globally the, the response is pretty positive because what happens here is affecting everyone, right? And what everyone does affects everyone else. That's just the, that's because we are one. And I believe, and what I've seen in the records, because you know, I've gone in and asked like, all right now, what's going on with this pandemic, mm -hmm. you know? And, and what the opportunity, the opportunity of the pandemic, first of all, the guidance in the records is, don't take it so personally. We have pandemics at irregular intervals. <laughs> Which, you know, we so love to think that we're special. I mean, right. are we special? You know, special is not good. Special is a divisive term, mm. right? Right. Um, unique, right? We are all unique expressions of the same thing. That's unifying, mm -hmm. right? So so we want to be clear anyway. So, um, okay, so there's the, there's the first thing is that, you know, pandemics, they're old hat. And they come around the opportunity is for us to learn to work together. Otherwise, we're not going to get through this. Mm. And then, of course, there, you know, there are so many layers to this. From a record standpoint, the challenge is can, you know, and, and the challenge is to us personally, because it is only, you know, like I look out in the world and, you know, I've got it. I can tell everybody what to do. I'm like, you should do this and you should do that. And it's like, well, that's not the point. You have no authority over there, right? The only place I have authority is here with me. And so the question is, what can I do? What's my part, right? Mm -hmm. And that is where the change comes in. Mm -hmm. Right. That is it, because there is no collective consciousness to transform. There right. is only individual awareness to awaken one soul at a time. Yeah. And then enough of us are awake. Well, it, it's a different ball game, And that's what's happening right now. And of course, in any time of change, you know, um, Oh, you know, old ideas never go gracefully. <laughs> you know, it's just one of the great laws of the universe. I mean, whether it's Napoleon Bonaparte being exiled to Elba or, you know, whatever, you know, um, you know, Stalin killing Trotsky in Mexico. I mean, all kinds of the, the lengths people will go to, right, to, to avoid facing the reality of change. Life is alive. Life is mm -hmm. very much alive and there is always change. The question is, how do we, how do I maintain my individual awareness, um, be true to myself, even though I am a part of the whole? Mm. So let's go, for, let's go to the triangle test that you mentioned. Okay. I have a feeling that that's related in the sense mm -hmm. that like, if we aren't unified uh -huh. within ourselves, that um, our one work is unifying ourselves. So tell us about the triangle test. And okay, so relates. here's the triangle test, which is which is really very interesting because um, it actually moves us. Actually, anyway, it's very exciting. It's propelling, is what I'll say about it. So here's the idea. So people, so we come up with these ideas for what what are my soul's purposes? Mm -hmm. You know, one of my soul's purposes. You know, I'm a parent. I you know I have a lot of purposes, right? Um, one of my purposes is to share about the Akashic record and to provide top quality education about the records to anyone who wants it. Okay, that is, I'm all over it. Okay, now, 
But here's the thing, you know, in the olden days last year, you know, we, <laughs> we lived in, it was all this heart mind. And I remember when someone said, you know, the heart and the mind are connected. My friends and I, we were like, wow. You know, that was like in the seventies. It was like, holy smokes. Now, I mean, every corporation in America has discovered it's profitable. So we're all like, oh yeah, you gotta have that heart mind connection. It's, anyway, problem with the heart mind connection. Is it great? Yes, it's great. It's incomplete because we live, the earth plane is, um, a plane of action, mm -hmm. right? We are not here. I mean, there might be five people out there who came to just sit on the mountaintop and we don't know them. We have spent lifetimes on mountaintops. The game now is how do I live in the world with an expanding spiritual awareness, participate to the best of my ability and maintain my integrity? How the heck do we do that? <laughs> it's a new ball game mm -hmm. now. So, so like even with this book, right? In my heart, I take the idea to my heart. I think, oh, this could be the next, the next iteration of my soul's purposes, right? I'm in my records. What about this book? And the first part is, I take it to my heart. What's my feeling about it? Mm -hmm. In terms of emotion, I don't care about buzzing around the heart center, who cares? I wanna know, What's the emotion? I think of this book and I'm like so excited. Mm -hmm. I just love it. Mm -hmm. I'm enthusiastic. I'm apprehensive, right? Because I, because I know, you know, I've written a couple books. I know that they don't just fall out of the sky. Mm -hmm. Okay, they take so. But I'm like, wow. Okay, my heart is full just thinking about it. Then I'm like, okay, good. We, we passed the heart. Now we're going to go to the mind. And I ask the mind, I ask my mind, is this, does this make good sense? Is this a good idea for me? Because I know there are a lot of good ideas out there, but not all of them are good for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the idea is to pursue this path of the book. Does this make sense? right? Is, mm -hmm. Does this really make good sense? Because one of the things we want to do on the spiritual path is keep our common sense in our back pocket, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So I'm like, you know, it really does. Given who I am, this makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. This is what I love to do. This is mm -hmm. a good, right? It's a good mm -hmm. idea. Okay, but then the will. The will is about action. The will is the point at which our soul's purposes, it is through the will that our soul's purposes come into form on earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if I sit there meditating about this book, thinking of good thoughts about it, I'm down with all of that. It's all good. Mm, yeah. That book isn't going to happen. I'm not going to be abducted by aliens who channel the book for me. And if they do, that's not a book I want to read. Right. Okay. So the will is, am I willing to do the work required today? Mm. Not the work, right? Am I willing to go on a book tour? Sure. I don't, book tours are a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. Am I, well, there's a lot of things, you know, what am I willing to do? Am I willing to get a new top that matches the book cover? Yes, but I don't even know what cover, the, color the book was going to be. Right, right. You know what I mean? I'm willing to do all that. Am I willing to get out a legal pad and start writing? Mm. That's the real question. And if I am, that's all I have to do. Mm. And that heart, mind, and will, because it is dimensionally, it takes that, that really reliable paradigm of heart and mind, rock solid, right? And what it does is it breaks it into will. And the will is the expression of the manifestation of the soul's purposes. Manifestation is the clarion call of our generation, because we are now in the age of the um, awareness of the will. This is new. This is new territory. 
Mm. It's very exciting. We have bumped up against the, you know, the mind is terrific. The mind is our friend. The mind is a tool. Mm -hmm. The heart is wonderful. The heart is great. But, you know, so all these together, but you add the will, you add action. And here on earth, I know on other planets, we probably just get to float around. But, you know, here, here yeah. we don't get to do that. We have to take action. Anyway. Yeah. And this actually is aligned with what I'm seeing. People saying, I have the heart, I have the mind, but I no longer have the will right. to do and this anymore. Exactly. And that's when, so then what happens is we go back to the drawing board. Okay. And we start to look for, like, but we want to ask, remember, visionaries have a terrible time functioning within a 24-hour time frame, which the only, you know, the point of power is only and always in the moment, mm -hmm. right? So what can I do today? Mm -hmm. What can I do today? Mm. And that's, and I know it seems Listen, this seems very trite to me. Sometimes I think, oh my goodness, this is just so primary. But it is primary because we are in a time of epic transformation. Mm. And when we go back to the basics, spiritual basics, human basics, we will be able to implement the changes that are living in our heart that we came to realize. Mm. And that's what inspired manifesting means. That's the inspiration. La la! <laughs> I knew we'd watch. It's to shine the light on it, right? Uh, love it. Okay, this is just so um, divinely time. We have been talking to Linda Howe about her book, Inspired Manifesting, Elevate Your Energy, which we talked all about in this segment, mm -hmm. Ignite Your Dreams Through the Kashuk Records, which we talked about in the first segment, and Inspired Manifesting, which we talked about in this segment. Thank you so much what a what what a joy and pleasure it is for you to share your work with us thank you thank you it's always great to be with you